Don't let them judge you for food. Now some of you, I'm sure, find it a but Matthew Barley movement. I've been attending to my diet recently, and uh, I'm happy to say yes, it's having a great effect. Thank you very much for asking. Um, you've got to watch what you eat, haven't you? Well, we've got a food scientist in our midst, you know, <laughs> you've got to try, haven't you? Um, so, so here we are, trying. And uh, I would say, don't let anybody judge you on the basis of food. Is it talking about dieting and health? No, prob probably not. Probably not. We know that there was a big Jewish element in the heresy that was being propagated in philosophy. We know that. And we know that in the early church there was a great fuss about food in general, whether Christians should eat meat, all that stuff at the Council of Jerusalem, you know, leading up to Acts 15, the letter to the churches, whether they should eat meat. And, and then in 1 Corinthians, whether they should eat meat that had been offered to idols at the local shrines and all the rest of it, because that was getting sold in the butchers. As if, you know, Derry down the road had a butcher shop full of stuff that had been offered to idols, other than the idols, materialism that is. Uh, so, uh, so, food was a big issue. Paul's saying, look, don't let them judge you. Now, I've got a very uh, wide circle of friends, for which I'm deeply grateful, in all sincerity. And the vegetarian carnivore debate in that wide circle of friends can get quite heated. Right? It can be an issue. I guess that's the nearest comparable issue in our day, and, and the situation to the kosher food, food offered to idols, debates that rage in the early church. Should you or shouldn't you eat meat at all? No? Would it surprise you to know? This is an interesting one. Would it surprise you to know there are opposing but very strongly held views on that subject, even within this small congregation? Even here. Surpri I'd be thrilled if it surprises you to know that. And the reason I'd be thrilled is, it shouldn't be a matter of vigorous dispute between us. Paul is saying, don't let anybody judge you on that. The blood of Christ, the power of the blood of Christ, far too wise to, to kindle, we're being far too wise to kindle some sort of dispute based on this that will cast the blood of Christ and its effectiveness in death. Judging one another on the basis of food. Even in this livestock farming area, where passions could run high on these matters, we preserve our faith in the effectiveness of Christ's death once for all for sin by not passing judgment on one another in these matters on food. The cruelty we're all against, unhealthy lifestyles, again I'd probably say we're probably all against at least in principle, but we don't pass judgment on each other for what we eat or do not eat and imprison consciences in that way because of the love of Christ because of the effectiveness of his cross. We don't allow anyone to judge us on food. Is there more hot potato coming up? Are you ready? Well, oh, food, hot potato. <laughs> Caleb's cooking. Booze. Oh. We don't judge one another on the basis of booze. Do not let anyone judge you, says Paul, by what you eat or what you drink. We don't allow anyone to judge us on food. We don't allow anyone to judge us and cast Christ's sacrifice into doubt on the things we do or don't drink either. Now stop there. We are not talking about addiction. We are not talking about the extent to which we do or do not eat or drink both. Let me show you. Therefore do not let anyone judge you by food or by booze. What you eat or drink, not how much you eat or drink. Does that make sense? We've certainly had privilege of serving in churches where people have had addictions to both food and drink. Not both at once necessarily, but you know, different people, different problems. It's serious. Oh, it's, oh, it's a fierce, powerful, awful thing. We're not talking about that here, says Paul. It's not how much, it's what you eat or drink. That's the issue. This is not about the issues of excess or addiction that can be associated with the consumption or the non-consumption of alcohol, because you can be excessive about not having it. This is about normal, sensible, rational use, and some will choose to do that, and some will not. There appear to be very nice, plausible people around in the church of Paul's day, making trouble about what other sadly saved believers were or were not drinking. Now it's safe to say the early church was troubled by those 
who are trying to enforce refraining from alcohol if you're a Christian. We know this from Paul's advice even to the outstanding young Christian leader, Timothy. Timothy had perhaps been caught up in it. And Paul says to him, 1 Timothy 5, do not share in the sins of others, keep yourself pure, stop drinking only water. People don't get that. There's a run through there. Don't share in the sins of others, keep yourself pure, stop drinking only water. Take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Now, of course, biblically there are lots of prohibitions of addiction and excess, but this is the biblical position. Do not allow anyone to judge you by what you eat or drink. There are problems to be encountered, aren't there, when anybody tries to enforce upon us or tries to assert that they are being any holier than Jesus was. Have you come across people who want to be holier than Jesus? I wrote an article ages ago for, I think it was EM or something, about the vegetarian issue, because I was keeping outdoor pigs at the time and it had become known. And uh, I wrote, wrote this article about, you know, not being holier than Jesus. Jesus sent me. Jesus' disciples didn't wash their hands all the time, according to the ritual. And Jesus not only drank wine, he made it. Jesus made wine. I mean, he didn't do it with a bucket in that sort of thing, did he? A lot of fruit, you know. There was a very famous wedding, and you know all about it in John chapter 2. You know, what are we going to say then? Don't let anyone judge you by food or by booze. Because of the blood of Christ. Now, it, it may be booze, certainly what you drink. It, it's possible that there were regards, uh, there were um, Jewish uh, extra biblical requirements about ritually clean drinking water. I had a Jewish friend that probably told you many years ago in college who, who would come and have coffee with me but he had to wash my kettle up first because my water was unholy Gentile water. I did bat an eye if he wants to wash my kettle for me, that's fine. <laughs> um, but uh, he'd wash it out every time before he'd have it. It's fine. Maybe something like that. But certainly the principle is there. Don't let anybody judge you on the basis of what you eat or drink. See above. And live in the freedom for which Christ has set you free. 